Hi, Gator Russo with the Majestic Rider. So today I'm going to take you out with Tilly. So Tilly's a mare. She can be a little opinionated. She can be a little bit spooky. We're working on her canter. She gates very nicely. And I'm going to take her out on the trail. And I've taken her down the road, but it's been raining, so I haven't taken her out on these trails in a bit. And there's a guy up there working on the irrigation system. And she's a little spooky horse, so she's probably going to spook at that. So what you want to do is be prepared, know your horse. You see, I have a stick that I'm going to carry. I usually don't need a stick with her, but if she gets spooky, I might have to give her some incentive to go. With her, and you need to figure out your own mare, because each one is different. But with her, if I go up to it, let her look at it, but don't let her run away with it. She'll figure it out. She'll go a little further, and then when she's ready, she'll go buy it. If you push her, she'll just tell you, I ain't ready, and I'm not going past it. Don't piss me off. That's her attitude. And... Uh, if I just wait and give her some time, she'll pretty much do anything for me. So with mares, again, you're trying to meet in the middle. If you beat them up, you better be ready for a war because some of them will really uh, get on fire when you do that. They will turn into a dragon. They'll rear, run backwards, try to dump you, try to kill you, might even try to stomp on your head because they're pissed off at you. But if you're nice to a mare, you respect them, and you ask them to do things, but you ask it in the right way. And then you show them what to do if they won't do it, if they're bad, or give them a different job to do that's worse than the job you're asking. Mares are great and will do most anything for you. So I wanted to show you how it goes and then show you where her canner is. But I expect her to be a little bit hot, sensitive, and a little bit spooky because she hasn't been out. And I know her, so that's what she's going to be. I did run her around first, but still, that might not be enough other things with mares when you tighten that girth again you know they have other parts in there than the geldings and some horses are just sensitive when you tighten the girth so when i tighten her girth i make it loose in the beginning then i go back tighten a little bit more go back tighten it a little bit more i never crank it up on her because she doesn't like it so she told me that so i go fine i don't care i can tighten it as many times as i need to or tighten it out on trail but some of you want to crank it up and that's not fair if the horse is sensitive there mare or gelding and then i have some other horses especially geldings that i can crank that girth up as tight as i want they don't care at all it doesn't bother them so you just got to know your horse and what you're doing okay so, so i just got on tilly and i'm trying to hook up my vest and she's like let's go let's do it that's her she's ready for the next step she's sensitive she's forward she's like why should we stand here now i've had her a long time right so she needs to stand and just wait while i do all my inspections here's okay for right now but we'll have to tighten it some more and she's just got to wait that's just you know our agreement here so you see she keeps trying to go and what do i keep telling her no nope. and the more she wants to go the more i'm going to screw around here i'm checking my chaps i'm doing other stuff because she's just got to wait okay so again don't let them take over a good mare is not one that takes over a good mare is one that you're communicating with and you have an agreement with okay so I understand she wants to go. I want to go too, but I got to be ready. So again, with mares, you, they will try and take over. Not all of them. These are like the alpha mare. Well, she's not really alpha because right? they're usually braver, but she's bossy. So let's say a bossy mare. You want to have an agreement. Yes, I understand you want to go, but no, nope, you need to wait for me. Okay. And they, they will test you and they know. and then again they know when you're feeling bad and they'll take care of you usually when you're feeling bad but if you're just tired or something they might screw with you that day because it might be fun for them so again we're going out we haven't been out in a while we're going to get up here it's going to be muddy you can be careful with the mud i just posted that thing that you know some horses were sinking in the mud and when your horse doesn't want to go in some mud or a puddle sure there might not be anything wrong send your friends through there first and make sure that it's okay otherwise when that horse doesn't want to go through something they can feel things with their feet they can also sense things that's why they're so good at it so when they don't want to go through something now she's looking because that little horse is over there hiding in the trees which always happens now we just sunk in some mud come on till and she goes through water just fine but we haven't gone through this while so again i had to be able to steer hold her and get her to pay attention and tell her don't worry about that horse in the corner okay but she could have just took me towards home if I, if I had no idea how to ride she might have just taken me back there so you gotta know now when she goes up here and sees it a horse see, she don't care but 
she doesn't see how I see. And, uh, her, you know, she's an older mare. Her vision's not going to be as good either. That happens as they get older. Their best vision, I think. If I remember correctly, it's about seven or eight, and then it goes downhill, so sometimes it's their vision. So as we go out here, I want to go out, going forward after she goes to the bathroom, and pay attention to the when they go to the bathroom. So she has diarrhea. Now she doesn't have diarrhea in her stall, so that means she's nervous, because that's what happens. It happens to horses and humans. And there she just tripped. Oh, and I see. The f so I look back. I like to look back because um, the footing kind of just gave out there and she kind of went in a hole. So when she just tripped though, you see my reins were short and when she tripped, I tried to lock down as hard as I could with my hands, my back, my legs, and I sat back. And what she did was push on the bit and she got herself out of there. If you're on a big loopy rein, they got nothing to push on. Uh, they sometimes will just fall over. You fall forward, knock them off their feet, and then they got nothing to grab on. There's no wall, so they just fall down. So again, when they trip, be aware of everything. It's not just the horse. Sometimes it's you. And you know, sometimes it's the footing, and other times something is wrong with that horse, but you have to look at all those things. So she's being careful and she's being nervous because she hasn't been out here, so I expect that. You just have to have some common sense when you're doing things with horses. You don't have any, it's just extremely difficult. Now, as we get up here, all this stuff has changed since she's been out here. The fields are different. They moved the sand. There's plastic there. So she didn't do anything bad. She's just stopping and looking. So she's turning her head side to side, and she just kind of blew out a little bit. So I'm just letting her look because I know she hasn't been out here. I'm going to give her some time. I'm not going to beat her up. She'll start a war if I beat her up. So once I think she's okay, I'm going to push her. And as soon as I make this turn, she's going to see that guy with the cart up there. And she's going to see the black uh, irrigation stuff. And uh, all that's going to get to her. So we'll see how we get by it. But again, the only way to learn is watch somebody else go through it. And see if they're successful or not successful. But you got to know how their horse is too. That's why I described how she is. So you know what I'm dealing with. So my reins are nice and short. Now she's going. And that guy's up there with the cart. And they always wear red or green because, again, horses don't see those colors so well or the blue. It all blends in with the green. So she might not, you, you might be riding your horse and think she sees that guy up there. She might not see it at all. So I got to be prepared that we're going to get up there. He's going to make a noise or bend over or move. Here comes the irrigation tubes. Oh, look, she's like, a, ooh, good girl. Oh, what a good girl. So reward them. Reward them when they try. But she might not see this guy at all. Okay, might be if you ever saw that Predator movie and the alien kept blending in with the trees and stuff. Oh, see, now she saw him. So all that time, she didn't see him. So I'm doing the same thing. I can feel her heart beating, so I know she's scared. So I'm sitting back, my hands are way up on the reins. I'm sneaking up if you see that. I sneak them up and I'm gonna keep my hands wide. Now I'm just letting her look. So I like to give Tilly some time. We've learned that if I just give her some time, She'll usually go by it. If I give her some time and she really won't go by it or throw fit, I might get off and walk her past it. Or if I think she's screwing with me, which they will do. See, now he's got the bushes up there and you can't see his head. But if I think she's screwing with me, then I will push her past it. But I always have to be ready. Do I want to get in a war or just try and work this out? Okay, so I gave her some leg. She didn't go on her own, but I gave her some leg. Like, will you do it? Now she gets closer, she'll see him better. But from back there, she couldn't really tell, so I'm going to keep a little leg on her, and then we'll just see how it goes. And we have to go to the left of this ATV thing, and the footing's not that great. And here we go. The right leg, push your way over. Good girl. Stay way over. Good job. Okay. Good girl. What a good girl, Tilly. You're so free. You're so free. So last year, I can't remember how long I had her last year or the year before or whatever. She might have cropped her pants. She didn't like going on trail alone. She didn't want to go out here. She was scared. And what happened there? I helped her. She helped me. I let her look at it and she goes, I can do this gay. I got this. Okay. So when you're riding when it's rainy and muddy, no matter if you're California or anywhere, you watch that footing. Because you'll see there's lots of crevices. So we know there's holes under there and things can give out. Step-ups are great to canter. 
but it's got to be the right spacing can it and she's like no it's not safe to can it there so i'm like okay so now we're going through a narrow part now there's a tree down up here she doesn't know but i do i mean just remember stuff that's why they lead the horses right just like the elephant it's grandma who leads them to the water every year so if there wasn't a tree there before they remember that more than I remember stuff. I kind of need her brain. <laughs> Mine's so full, I don't remember everything. That happens when you get old. So young people, be happy you remember stuff, because we forget. If it wasn't for Siri, I wouldn't remember what articles I was supposed to write. All right, so she's doing good. She's being sure-footed here. We come to the narrow part. What am I going to do? I'm letting my reins go loose. I'm letting her head go down. So she's usually very sure-footed in the beginning. She put her head down a little, but not a lot. But I really want them to see that because that's a dangerous spot. All they got to do is catch a leg, fall sideways, and they fall on the side. Then it, sometimes it's hard to get out of those things. And the horse is scrambling, not knowing how to get out. You don't know how to help it, and it becomes a mess. Okay. So this horse has gotten very, very brave. One, because I ride her alone a lot because I don't have a ton of people to ride but so I have to. Two, I push her and I make her do new things. And three, we make agreements with each other. Just like I said, I help her, she helps me. So we're going to come up here and go left. Home is to the right. I just put my right leg on and I kind of test her. I put, kept my hands forward. You might think I have contact, but I don't. I wanted to see, are you going to turn for home? Because before, she would have ran home. She just said, see you later, Kay. You're an idiot. I'm not going out here. So I'm going out forward. We're just doing a flat walk. It's not really fast. But we, you want to go out with some energy. Especially if the horse hasn't been out. You might want to be doing a running walk or a saddle gait or even cantering if that horse is a little cuckoo and you can get it to go and the footing is safe. Remember, all, you have to take all those things into consideration. Okay. So I want to move out. But I'm going to practice cantering. And so I want to warm her up a little bit. Get her joints warmed up because she's older. She's 15. And she's still 15. And uh, you'll see, she has a great gait. My back was hurting the other day. It went out because I've had back issues. You know, because we get thrown and all sorts of bad shit happens to those trainers. <laughs> and, uh, the walking horses are the only ones who fix my back. I ride 20 you know, different kinds of breeds. And I'll be like, it's still not better because I've done tests like that. And then I get on a walking horse with one that has a pretty good back and forth motion. So it's got some overstride. I get off and I'm like, thank you so much. Better than my chiropractor. All right. So here it's a little uneven. There's roots sticking up. If you don't know what to do, loosen your reins and sit back and let them take care of you. And Hopefully you got a horse that has experience so it knows how to take care of you because they only get that with experience. They don't naturally, well some naturally know but some don't just like people. So Some actually have a good like nap in their head and can find their way home all the time and other ones of us get lost all the time. <laughs> and have lots of entertaining adventures when we can't get home and then we tell our horse please, please be barn tower and take me home. All right. So you'll see she's looking here and there, not bad. Now I want to practice cantering, but we're going through a little mud, so you don't want to canter through the mud, especially with walking horses that gait or a PC, because they slide their feet more, and it'll slide more. And you don't want to fall down, because then they won't want to try again. You got to do it someplace that they have good footing. Okay, now we're going to get to this puddle, and we'll see. She might just walk around it, or oh, she thought it was okay. So again, her senses are better than mine with the mud and what's underneath the ground. All right, so we're going to get up here and we're going to try to canter. And she's more athletic than she was before, and she's like, let's gate. And I was like, hmm, let's try to canter. So I'm going to give her the cues. Now I'm half halting because that was flat and I got to help her. Now she lost her lead. That's okay. Just stop and ask her again. pretty nice for a horse that didn't canter very well. So the horses that just gait or pace and you want them to canter and nobody taught them when they were younger, you got to have clear cues so they know what to do. You got to, well, you don't have to do anything, but it works best if you teach them in the arena, use those poles 
get them to figure out their back end so they're not cross cantering and then start practicing steps here and there on the trail and that's what I did with her. Now I also ask for different leads when I'm out here and her right lead is worse so we haven't been out here so I started with her left. I want to make it easy. Come on, she can do this. Now here and there on the flat is going to be very difficult for her to canter and that's why she does that leaping canter. She kind of jumps up and throws herself. So I only practice one or two steps and over time it'll get better but never in the mud. Okay, so I'm going to try right here. We're through the mud. So I'm going to half halt sit back, canter. Good girl. Just walk, canter again. Good girl. Good girl. And then she got a couple more steps. So each horse is different and don't let your friends say just kick it and go because I could kill you especially if they don't if they're PC they can get very trippy when they don't know what to do with their legs so you got to practice you got to prepare them help them and then over time they understand what you want and they try really hard now if I got there and she couldn't canter she wouldn't do it she would just gait if your horse does that you have to think do they not know what I'm asking or is it dangerous here Tilly knows exactly what I'm asking. I'm sure of that, so you have to be sure. But she knows also, you know, again, she, she went this whole way and she decided she wanted to look here. It's dark down there and shady, so I'm gonna let her look while I'm talking. But um, she decides if she can do it or not. She either tries for me or she doesn't. And I know her now, so I know, it's not like she's trying to be a jerk. She's like, this is not safe for me. I slide my feet a lot, Kate, and I don't think I should do that. And I just go, okay. Now she took herself off of that terrain and I'm fine with that. I've been on it, but she said, I don't trust that terrain and I would rather just go over here. I said, that's fine. Again, I think she's smarter than me for the terrain, you know, for both saying it. Okay, so there's going to be another patch of mud. So again, with the gated ones and the ones that just pace, unless you get a clear cue, don't start on the bottom because they'll fall out of the canter. They won't get it much. So you start as you're going up the incline. So we're starting to go up. I'm going to tilt her to the left. Now I had to think. I couldn't talk right there. But you saw as we went, she got a step that was so-so, and then all of a sudden she's like, I got it, I got it, I got it. Kind of like when you're going in through a jump rope, okay? And you're trying to get in the jump rope, and you're like, can't do it yet can't do it yet and then you're like I got it I'm in so that's how it kind of is with their canner but if you start where it's steep that'll usually help them but it can't be too steep that they can't get their legs underneath them to actually get the canner so I don't start where it's flat on the bottom with her I start right as I start going up the hill other ones I might be able to start halfway up the hill but that's what's working with her okay as we get up here, the footing's given out some. Now she just decided she wants to look again. I'm okay with that. Now I'm not okay if she ran backwards or started running sideways. But she's getting much, much better at this and much, much braver. Because again, good girl. So, and then now she started going. She's like, I'm okay. Thanks for letting me look. I'm like, you're welcome. So, you know, mirrors are different. They think and some of us like that and some of us don't. You got to get used to them but they are they are great. Once you once you build their trust and they trust you they will do a lot but they will tell you like we're getting up here and the footing's dropping off on both sides and so we're gonna stay right in the middle. So right there she just tripped on something. She stubbed her foot but she might be paying attention to something else. So I'm okay with that. I don't think anything's wrong with her because I know she does trip once in a while but she paces and gates. And it, she tripped her, I should say stumble, okay? Now sometimes she'll stumble because she's not paying attention at all because something's making her nervous and she's freaking out on something else and she'll have a big stumble. And uh, she, But she always catches herself because she's athletic, but some aren't athletic. So when they, you know, they don't catch themselves, you're like, is something wrong with them? Yeah, something's wrong, they're not athletic, that's the problem. <laughs> So you got to help them get athletic, teach them. All right, so here it starts going uphill. We're on the flat. It's still kind of flat. So now I'm going to ask her right here, can her? Now she tried to get it. She did that little leaping because she's like, I can't get it here. And she tried to get it for me. And now that she's learned, 
she tried and then she gave it a step she tried again and then she got it okay now do you want to go through the water or not she goes through water but this could at least be mushy now again they have senses right they got whiskers they can feel things we can't feel just like bees can find their way home after they go out all over the place and they don't have maps or signs so again you're always supposed to look at something, let them look at it, but you know, be ready that they might turn around and be like, no way. Okay, we got one more hill. So what I'm going to do now, I haven't done her hard lead and she might not get it here, but I'm going to try. So I'm going to go for her right lead and she's been doing her left, so she might get confused. So I'm going to turn her to the left. Keep turning her. And she's pooping. <laughs> Are you done pooping? Okay, can her. Now she didn't get it, but that's okay. okay. And we'll see as we turn home. Some of you have seen her before when she's been anxious in her previous videos. You saw she was kind of insane, but she was fun. <laughs> she's always a good time. All right. So all these things that she used to be afraid of, like the water tank and stuff, she hasn't been out here in a while, but look, she don't care anymore. She's like, yeah, I saw that. I remember that. So we're going to get up here, take a little break, and then we'll uh, go back. A lot of times I get off and graze them. I like to do that to reward them from coming up here, but I already had her loose and grazing, so I don't want to graze her anymore. So we'll get up here, give her some food, let her have a little look around, and then uh, we're going to go back. Now these out and back rides, you have to know this about horses, if you don't. Those are the ones that set horses off, because you go out, and you turn around, and you're going directly towards home. And they think, run, get my food, get my friends. The faster we get home, the faster I get my rewards. So when you turn around, you got to know that's going to happen. That's why I always like to do stuff when I get home, so they don't think home is a reward. You want a cookie? And I like to stand. If you don't stand and practice things like backing up on the trail or side passing or doing any of those things, you can't expect your horse to do it when you need it. When you get stuck on a trail and the only way to get out is to go backwards, guess what? You're going to have a problem. So that's why all that training in the arena is very important. And uh, so she's being very good. I'm facing away from home because as soon as you face home, of course they want to go. That's just normal. The ocean's way out there. I don't know if you can see it. It's a pretty nice day, but it poured the other day. Okay, good girl. Yeah, let's go home now. So as we turn, this is usually when they freak out. That's a lot of times when they rear up or they throw a buck and they try to take off. Sometimes it's not the horse's fault. It's what you're doing after the ride that's the fault, okay? So she didn't speed up. She's walking out, but not bad. Okay. And uh, with her, Again, she might you still get more anxious as we get closer to her home because she's been like that. But I always go home, and uh, unless she's perfect, I try to go home and practice cantering so I get that time in because I don't always get to ride her every day. Okay. So she's good. Now the problem is when you practice cantering and you plan it on the hills, the horses want to canter all the hills. Once they figure out that's easier. So you got to be careful and try to alternate or on the way home canter one hill but not another and you got to keep them out of it they, and tell your friends no I don't want to canter all the hills the reason a lot of gated people don't canter is because once the horse learns it it is usually easier for them especially if they are trotty so it's dangerous with the trotty ones if you teach them to uh, canter too soon and you want your gait to get faster because once they figure out they can canter they're like why would I gait faster when I can get up the hill easier doing this? Okay, so you got to be a little bit careful if you want that gait fast, get that gait down. But if they're pacey, the sooner you teach them to canter, the better. Because the pacey and the ones that just gait, it's much, much harder as they get older. But you saw, she's 15 years old, and if you look back at Tilly's, uh, go to her playlist, you'll see Tilly's cantering videos. You'll see all we went through to get this canner, and it took a long time, but it is quite lovely. It's not as lovely at home, but it's lovely out here. And uh, if you're riding with different people and they got real trotty horses, you know, they're going to 
be cantering a fair amount if you guys are going fast or they're going to be doing that gate elope and it's not going to be so easy to you for you so it'll be better if they're on the flat cantering that you just rack and so you want to teach that horse that's the nice thing is your horse is going to keep much faster than theirs so there's benefits and downsides to everything but if you get that gate better you'll be just racking while they're cantering okay and you might be jealous of them cantering but they might be jealous of you racking it's all fun and all your horses are different until they stay in the middle She's more daredevil than I am because I can see these big cracks and I know what happens if you stick on one of those cracks. We're going down. Okay, so now she's going a little faster and what's going to happen is we're going to get to this hill. She's going to try to canter. So I'm sliding the bit. Tilly. Okay. Now she got her right lead there. Good girl. She's a smart girl. Uh, she did two steps of cross cantering and then she got her correct lead in the back because again she's not she didn't figure that out on her own it was horrible now she's got a little amped up so i'm just half halting and no leg and breathing um she Ooh, what was that holy shit you think it's a monster i bet you it was a bird Tilly. <laughs> pterodactyl yeah it's okay because again if it was a mountain lion i want her to get the hell out of here i better be able to hold on if it is and we do mountain lions they're all over people all right so see i didn't get mad she spooked it was warranted and you know she's an alert mare so that stuff can happen so you got to be able to ride it and i went forward a little bit you know as we get older our balance isn't the same i never used to move but as you get older shit changes and uh so <laughs> you got to have a safer horse and be able to sit or ride it you need to. Okay, now up here this is real narrow and the footing's not good so I'm going to go up on the side. She's trying to can it. Good girl. Now she tries to can her a lot because she thinks that's what I want to do. So she, now she's like, you want to can it? I got it. I got it. This is good footing. Shall we do it here? I'm just going to take you with me. Let's do it here. And that's what she does. And that's okay. Again, she's trying, so I don't want to punish her for trying, but I will change it up here and there. And uh, so she's doing well, but she will usually pick her left lead if I just leave it up to her. So when we get back, I like to practice that right lead to help her stay stronger. Okay. And she's getting a little faster. Running downhill is not a safe thing to do, especially... And the footing's not perfect. So walking horses tend to slide their feet if nobody taught them how to canter. They can gate really fast and well if somebody taught them how to gate. But the cantering's much harder. So starting on inclines, going a quarter way up the hill is usually the best part to get your lead. If you're kind of gating into the canter, because some of the pacey horses can pick it up from their gate, um, then you could go a little further up and let them gate a little faster and then go into it. Now, I'm going to make her gate, so I'm sliding the bit. She did a very nice gate there, going more towards a rack. Um, so it depends on your horse. you got to kind of figure it out and figure out what works for them. Okay, because each horse is different. But you got to know, if your friends take off at the bottom of the hill and start going like a bat out of hell, and your horse is getting the idea how to canter, but it doesn't canter well. Well, oh, you're going to get a hell of a canter. They're going to canter off, and they're going to be so lateral that they're going to cross canter, switch their leads in front, switch it in the back, and you're going to be bouncing all over the freaking place going, rocking horse canter? Seriously. Seriously, these horses are supposed to have a rocking horse canter. Yes, they do, but only if you teach them or they naturally do it on their own. And some do. Some naturally just do it. But that box trotter I just had in, he had a very natural canner. And, uh, oh now. Look, she's trying to canner. So, again, I'm not punishing her. <laughs> but some of them, you know, it's just natural for them to canner. Other ones we have to show them. Or somebody taught them when they were young. So, it's much easier for them. Now, she's doing a saddle gate. And she's kind of actually doing a little gate a 
now we got lots of branches so I gotta watch out because she's flying and she hangs a leg on one of those things but you see, again usually when they're going fast they pick their feet up pretty well if they don't then something might be wrong or they're not paying attention it could be either of those things so she's going a little fast but for Tilly this isn't that bad so but, you know we're getting closer to home and when we get really close they know they're like oh yeah I forgot she's gonna do that stuff that's when they start getting slower so good girl but see there's a rock and she's like I can canter over that look what I can do now so she is so much more athletic even though she's older because she's been doing all that pole work and when I can't ride her I just put her over those poles I let her canter them I let her she doesn't usually trot them but occasionally she does and uh she canters them she sometimes you know just gates over them she does lots of stuff but they've made her so much more sure-footed her proprioception is so much better she's aware of where her feet are and uh, she doesn't hang her feet as much and again she's smart so look where she's going she's like the trail's over here let's go let's go let's go so now when they get amped up and they're going back fast and again, it's not her fault, it's my fault, because I haven't had her out here, so I'm not blaming her at all. But when I go through that narrow part, that's going to be tricky. So i got to start slowing her down. Hey, Till, the girl. And I might have to stop and back her up if she really won't pay attention before we go in there. So see that? Now she tripped, not because she has a problem, the pudding kind of gave out, and she's so motivated, she's like, oh, we need to go home, so I'm going fast. So I gotta be careful during this. I'm gonna half halt, easy, easy, good girl, Tilly. You know, stay slow, good girl. So I talk to her just like I would be talking to a person or a dog, like, hey, pay attention. We're not rushing. Now let's stop. Oop. Now as we stop, good girl going to try to can her. Now she's pawing because she's impatient. Okay, So I'm going to stop again because I was talking to you when she did that and then I went off. So I want to go off. No, no, no. Well, the canner's okay. But before she starts pawing, a lot of mares paw and that's what they're doing. They're impatient with whatever you're doing at that moment. Feeding, standing. So you don't have to do it long, but make them do it again. If you walk off when they paw or feed them when they paw, guess what? You're just rewarding the bad behavior. Easy. Good girl now this is difficult so i'm gonna whoop hey take it easy and get her attention back because she, if she flies through this they are gonna trip okay because i know her and how she moves if she's not paying attention she's gonna catch a foot there so that was a drop down easy so you'll see she's looking she's like where'd that guy go and he's out there yep she's looking for him she's like oh. I just want to get by him and get back home. I just want to get by him. She's looking for him. It's like that guy looking for the predator in the movie. Okay? And remember, he has a red on leak. You don't see that that well. You see him? So I see him. You see him. Now she just caught him. Now again, she might see an invisible man holding grass there because the red blends in with the green. So she's more worried about him than the irrigation tubes. He has to be if he does something like he tripped and fell, she's gonna spoof. But you'll see my reins are pretty short. I'm not riding on some floppy rain. Because you don't ride dragons on floppy reins. Good girl. Good job, Tilly. What a good girl. So overall. I think she did excellent. She really has not been out there in a bit because we've had such bad weather and the road's not the same as riding on the trail. And when we've gone down the road, we also had a trail partner. Now I'm going to stop her by these irrigation tubes. She's like, why are we stopping? Because she's going a little bit too fast. Okay. So don't let them drag you home. If you, if you stop, but don't stop long because the ones that are really pulling you are going to rear up unless you want to rear up. But otherwise, you stop, wait, like one, two, three, go. And then you stop again, whoa, one, two, three, go. And you just keep doing that. Stop, one, two, three, go. And you just keep doing it all the way home. You better have a good stop on your horse. And then over time, they will understand. So 
again to me she did excellent if i rode her out here tomorrow and the next day i have a pretty good horse under me and i think i did anyhow she was just a little nervous this here but she did everything i asked her to do so you have to be aware of that when it's in the winter these horses turn a little cuckoo because they're not getting worked and you can't run them and they can't get their energy out you know i can we're lucky we had a pretty dry arena so i could run her around if i didn't do that first she would have been worse and again i would have expected it i would have been like yep i asked for that don't, tell, don't go in the mud so you can't be pissed at them when you knew it was going to happen so if somebody said do you want to go on a trail ride and we got 20 people going with us and I hadn't worked my horse in a month and it hadn't been turned out and I couldn't work it before I go. I feel like I'm really sad. But no, you, you have a horse I can borrow. <laughs> but I'm not taking mine. Yeah, I just take one of my sale horses because they're much, much calmer. But I, I like the hotter horses myself. So know what you have, make the right decision. But if you make the wrong decision, that horse is just an idiot out there. It's not their fault, it's your fault because you didn't prepare them right. And is it? Say hi. We want to say hi. So we're going by the walking horse. She's new, and uh, we, we got to get her work soon. So, but wants to show her mommy. And uh, I forgot what I was saying. So this horse is hiding behind the tree. Tilly's staring at him. She's like, "Are you the predator?" For some reason, all the horses that are in this paddock, so I'm standing here, so she's a good girl. All the horses in this paddock like to hang under the tree because it keeps the bugs off and it gets rid of the flies. And it's, it's nice and spooky. Here. So I'm giving her a cookie because she went by it. She didn't freak out. She's looking at the horse. But I know she doesn't see perfectly. She's a little spooky and I'm trying to help her. So the next time we go by it, she knows he's there. Now again, if you don't steer them, they'll try to go off to the side. If you know where the good footing is, then you steer them and make them go through it. But be positive you know where it is. If you don't, be aware that they're going to try and go where it is, and it might be under a tree. And if you don't duck, they're going to take you out. So you know, he's got to be aware of what's going on. It's funny for the rest of us watching, but not for you. <laughs> All right. Now we could do different things. Our footing in the arena is pretty good, so I'm going to try and go just canter up and down this road. And again, I couldn't do that with her in the beginning. If I asked her to canter here, she would just run. She might rack or she might trip because she's just running and not knowing what to do. No, we're not canting. <laughs> but see how much she tries for me? She's like, do you want to canter? I think I can do it here. I'm like, no, guess what? We're going to the arena today to make it harder because you hate it in there. And uh, so when it's mucky in here, with her, I might only get a couple of steps. And, you know, if you have lots of horses to try, you're like, none of them can canter today. Then it's the footing, okay? But if you're like, she's the only one who wouldn't canter and everybody else cantered perfectly, then it's not the footing, it's the horse, okay? She's like, oh, let's stop. So I don't want to stop at all. I'm just going to immediately canter. Now, the hard part is I like to use the pole once in a while with her, but there's mud after it, and she's a crazy girl, so she just likes to sometimes leap, and we don't want to slide in the mud. She's a girl. So she's doing her little leap and canter. It's okay. Good girl. Uh, 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 uh. Now, this wears her out. That leap and canter is hard for them to do. No, that's not it. No, that's not good enough. And when you saw me do it on the road, remember she reared up a whole bunch when she did it because it was hard for her canter. So she tried. And she's like, I can't do it there, but I can do it here. Good girl. So again, you and you, you don't get, don't give when they yank on the bit. Uh, that's what she just did. She's a know-it-all. <laughs> but you reward the slightest try. So if they get a little bit, you're like, oh my God, that felt like it was going to be a good canter step, but my horse didn't get a canter step at all. Or someone goes, oh, that looked like, no, didn't get it. Stop. Reward the horse. 
because if you reward the little try, they will try again. If you try them for perfection from the beginning, you'll miss all the little tries and then the horse goes up yours. Why don't you buy something that canters because it's not me. So you got to reward the little try. Give him a little break. See, she's nice and relaxed at home. She's like, yeah, I'm fine now. But she's just going to get better and better. So as she gets older, you know, she might be a horse that I can take my lessons out on the trail with her. But they only get that way because you practice and do things with them. So we'll try this one little pole that doesn't have mud. And again, sometimes she leaves big. So we'll try. Hopefully we're going to can her. I'm warning her. Not yet. We're going to use the pole. Good girl. Now she got the wrong lead, but that's okay. So we'll just walk and try it again. So some of the horses, you always hear me say canter, but some of them, once they're not anxious and freaked out, I'll give them a fair amount of time before the pole to say the word so it can get to their brain, especially if y'all are nice. Yep, yeah, she's thinking about it. We're going to canter. Good girl. Walk. Cool. So we got a bunch of steps and she was not doing her leaping canter spastic thing. That was great, right? I don't have the other camera set up so you can't see it, but I think you get the idea. You can tell the leaping canter because she jumps up and then when she's just cantering, it's just this rolling motion. So that was great because she thought about it. If they don't think about it in front of those poles, when they get to the pole, they'll either get there and be able to pick up the correct lead or they'll get there and they're like, I don't have another step. I got to pick up the other lead. So you tell them, yeah, good job, but that's not it. So you keep going. But when they do the right thing, then you stop them, reward them. I'm going to let you look at Tilly while I'm talking. I don't remember if I said this, but also gated horses get bored easily because again, they can do so many things and they usually have good endurance. And uh, even if they're athletic, if they get bored, if you go really, really slow and they kind of get sleepy, they're spacing out because you guys are just walking head to tail. So none of the horses are really paying attention. They can get trippy. And that's just because you're going so slow. So you do have to make sure you keep those horses awake. And some people will say, what are you talking about? Because you are the people that go out and you gate and you walk and you gate and you canter and you walk and you're moving, you're going ob over obstacles and you're doing stuff. That horse is paying attention and climbing and that's different. If you're out there climbing stuff at a walk, even if you're head to tail, those horses usually pay more attention. But if you're on the flat like this and you're just walking and you're sitting there chit chatting and you're not paying any attention and all you do is walk really, really slow, yes. Any of those horses that I mentioned that are sure-footed, even any of those can get trippy because they are just not paying attention. They are so bored with what you're doing that they are just kind of sleepwalking through it, okay? So don't forget that. So part of it is the horse, but part of it is the rider and also where you're riding and what you are doing. So challenge the horses, make them more athletic. You bought a gated horse, gate it some every time you ride it gate it right until he's like yeah because they gate can't get better if you don't practice it if you want a better canner you got a canner because that's the only way to get things better and that's part of it is not just the horse she's like nope it's you too